Hey kids, this is Ivan. Today I'd like to talk to you about when things go horribly, horribly wrong, both as a DM and a player, or uh, maybe I could call this like when bad things happen to good characters, or maybe even bad characters. So essentially I'm playing today in the Lamentations of the Flame Princess game I've talked to you about, which is, you know, if you don't know, it's very much like basic D&D, a couple different rules and whatnot, but it's, and it's fairly deadly. Um, some of these guys, uh, you know, out of five players, four of us are on our second character, and we've lost a couple henchmen as well. You know, each one of us had a henchman uh, at one point, period of time or another. And uh, so we're, we're uh, essentially, without going into lots and lots of details, at this point in the campaign, we're in a keep. And uh, there's a big orc menace, and we're kind of helping out with that. And there's some political intrigue going on, and my magic user character has charmed a few key people. So I've been working at that for a while. And in the meantime, there's a mine underneath this keep that... Uh, you know, has a lot of silver and gold and all that kind of junk in it, and we're uh, you know working for these people to keep clearing this place out. And we get to keep some stuff, and so we're splitting our time between political intrigue and trying to figure out how we can become big shots, and going down and doing some basic old dungeon stuff and killing some monsters. You know, killing some time in between like some other adventures. So we're uh, we're doing that, and so uh, today we go down and we kill this one monster, and it has this little miniature magic wand on it, and so I kind of snatch it from the thief being a magic user. So I'll give this right back; it'll be fine. And, uh, you know, I concentrate on this thing, and I'm able to see another version of this little magic wand. Out, and it's outside, and there's a, you know, a bunch of dead game or something around it. And uh, there's a little gem on top of this wand, and so impulsively I touch it. Instantly, I vanish in front of these guys, and in fact, I'm there with this other little wand. So I pick it up and say, oh, well, this is kind of neat, and I test it out, and of course it'll teleport you to the other wand. Nifty. Except I've had to swim through something in this dungeon, and it is winter, and it's freezing, and I'm in a robe, and no winter gear, because the mine is nice and warm. That's great. So now the dungeon master says, you know, essentially what I have to do is roll three ones, not consecutively, but every 20 minutes of game time I get to roll again. But in six hours, you know, have I not rolled all these ones, and I'm rolling these ones to find my way back in because I know there's a little side entrance into the mine, I'm going to freeze to death, and I'm losing constitution points and, and all that kind of stuff in the, in the, uh, at the same time. So I get to play my retainer, who's, who's just gotten himself up to first level fighter from zero level human. And, uh, Sure enough, next encounter, he gets uh, you know randomly selected to be bitten by a poisonous spider. Makes his saving throw, but still takes some hit points of damage. And, and it's gonna essentially what's gonna happen. He's gonna take a point of damage every round until he's at negative one. And okay, he won't be dead. It'll be great. They can take him out of the dungeon. Now it's a simultaneous uh, initiative. You know, I gotta roll initiative with a spider to uh, to knock it off before it bites me. We we roll the same number. So of course the spider bites me again. And uh, I make my save again, but of course, now I'm taking much more hit points of damage. So for 10 minutes of game time, they get to watch this henchman die, and I get to say some last words, and that's kind of funny, and a bummer. In the meantime, I'm outside, rolling fives and fours and sixes, freezing to death. That's great. So, finally, after three hours on my last possible roll, I managed to roll the third one and find the cave entrance and get to, you know, be inside. You know, thank God, and I'm going to have to rest up for a couple of days. Wonderful. You know, wasn't a total loss. However, uh, at this point, a couple of uh, bigwigs ride into town. A bunch of people actually ride into town because the DM has all these possible plots. So we've got all these things going on because he's, he's pretty much figured he's going to cover all his bases in terms of what could possibly happen and what we want to go check out because it's kind of a sandbox. So it's great. These two bigwigs show up in the town, and unbeknownst to me as a person, and unbeknownst to my character, because uh, I, this stuff happened at, uh, like several sessions ago when I had to split uh, after a character of mine died, and I had a gig anyway, so I just, you know, I gotta I got go now, guys. Well, it turns out that they uh, were able to uh, accidentally awaken this old wizard and fighter pair uh, that were in a tomb, and they, they did something, they ripped some tapestry or whatever. These guys woke up, they're incredibly dangerous, incredibly evil, and, uh, you know, have, you know, ravaged the countryside in the past and all that kind of stuff. So they wake them up. Some god intervenes and pretty much wipes the memories of these two brothers, so they're not sure what, you know, what happened. They're, they don't remember the party because they were going to kill them at that point. And they also uh, put some kind of spell on the party, this guy does, so they cannot speak of this. So they all know about this, but they, don't, uh, you know, they can't even tell me about it, so I've been in the dark. These guys show up. Everybody in the party kind of freaks out. You know, meantime, the party cleric, by the way, you know, uh, one of the reasons that my hunchman got to die is because he couldn't make the session, so he was supposed to be, you know, staying in his hotel room doing something. And uh, so everybody's kind of freaked out about this whole thing, except for one player who decides, heck, I'm going to go chat up these really, really dangerous guys. So we all kind of watch in horror as our friend uh, does this, you know, and uh, 
he sits in, in the bar, and, you know, you know, my character's, you know, in his hotel room, somebody else is, one other character stays there to watch the, you know, inevitable. And, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, evil guys kind of say, oh, geez, you look kind of familiar. And he says, oh, yeah, maybe. And, and then he says, you know, I've got something to show you back in my room, and maybe that'll clear some stuff up. And we're all just looking like, oh, my God. So, in fact, they go back to his hotel room, and he shows them this tapestry, the actual tapestry they ripped uh, to, to awaken these guys. So now these guys, all of a sudden, have their memories restored and realize that this guy and the other three players, not mine, in fact, raided their tomb. And he's really pissed off and summons a demon to hold this guy and this is not good and he starts questioning where are the other people. Uh, in the meantime, all the other characters, you know, get the, uh, the for forbiddance for them to speak of this, like, removed. So this, this thief or specialist character that watched all this kind of go down and kind of snuck up and, and saw this flash of light from this guy's hotel room, realizes it's, it's time for us to go. So he gets me, you know, it's kind of gives me the, uh, you know, two, 20 second version of this stuff and it's time to split. So we all go down to the mine because there's two gates out of the place and that we know they're going to probably go, you know, block those because he's got a whole garrison with him. We go in the mine and go back out that same entrance that I uh, just, uh, just got my back in. So we're back out in the snow again, and you know I still haven't healed up completely. So this is wonderful for me. At least we have fur coats this time. In the meantime, all of our money, all of it, is in the vault. Except we have 200 silver pieces each, and which is you know, fortunate silver is the rate of exchange. But we're broke. Our horses are gone. We're pretty much able to take our spell books and our weapons and armor and and just run for our lives. In the meantime, these guys are chatting up. You know our friend in his hotel room. And he, uh, you know, they say, you know, how do, where do you think these guys went? And he's like, well, gee, there is kind of an exit out of the mine. And we all just kind of look like, oh, geez, that's great, dude. And so, in fact, you know, we're, we're running for our lives. Not really sure, you know, if, if anybody's after us or not. Um, the DM was pretty much sure this guy was just going to die. As far as we know, he is, in fact, dead. But then they talk about it a little bit, and so he comes up with this Terminator scenario. So then now they put this Gius request on this guy. And so now... Uh, He's going to go out and hunt us down and knows all the spots that we might go to. This is fantastic. Of course, we're not really supposed to know this in character, so this guy may show up. And, of course, you know, the player himself gets to roll up a new character and whatnot, but I guess he's going to kind of, you know, through email play this guy. So now everything that we've done is completely destroyed. All the, play, all the places we've been, uh, these guys are now spreading rumors that we are, in fact, devil worshippers and led all the orcs into these places and murdered all these people and didn't all your trouble start once these guys showed up. So now we are running to find a new section of the world to go into. The DM, in fact, you know, has everything completely blown. So DMs, let this be a lesson to you. Don't uh, plan your game too much because you never know what players are going to do. But after all that, I found the session incredibly entertaining and so did everybody else because to me, this is what D&D is about. It's not about planning you know, what we're going to do and, and, uh, and this whole big, uh, you know, uh, writing out a whole script for your character, writing out a whole script for your campaign as a DM. It's about letting people interact and letting things happen. And that was really funny. And to me, that's what D&D &D is all about. But none of us are really sure what's going to happen next.